Hey guys, it's Tiffany and Steven from Bless Bears. We're a family of 11 with nine kids. He and I, yes, they're all ours. We, we, know, have, we know how they're made. We know what causes it. All the normal questions that are usually asked. Yes, we have some questions and we're going to give some answers the best that we can. So. And we're not Catholic, by the way, either. That's always the next oh, question. Oh, yeah, they do ask if we're Catholic. Yeah. No, we're not Catholic. That's usually the next question that is always asked whenever we sell all the kids. Mm -hmm. but what's the question? All right. Um, the first question is, can you tell us how you met and your wedding story? Maybe show us a photo of your wedding. We met. Dairy Queen. And we were young, 16 and 18. We started working together, obviously liking each other, started dating. Yeah. And... We dated for a while. Yeah. And then... Um, you proposed in May of 2002. And then you're, we moved to, we moved to Tennessee. Mm -hmm. When we got engaged, we moved to Tennessee. Yep. And then while we were down there, um, we were working. So anyways, then we came back up here for mm -hmm. the wedding to where, you know, where we family, live now. Friends. For family and all that other stuff. Yep. And we had the wedding here. And then uh, it was in February. So yep. it was a cold wedding. There was snow and stuff like that on the ground, which was okay. Yeah. Um, we did like a... A simple kind of wedding nothing yeah, real wasn't, fancy wasn't, or no. anything like that you know um it was affordable we'll say frugal. Yeah. It, it was beautiful but it was it was affordable it was it was very uh we did we did lasagna yep we did lasagna and breadsticks and stuff salad. like that and salad we were supposed to have dinner at a certain time and something you're just really going into all the details well that's what they asked didn't they and then just a wedding story okay and it they, took forever to get the food yeah, it took it forever. So they long. messed they messed up or something like that and then people were like okay people were like leaving and going and getting mcdonald's and bringing it yeah, back and to bringing our wedding. it back so there was like so the place that we were there they wouldn't let us have alcohol so we ended up having to bring our oh own my gosh and put it in the in the cars and then so it was i don't course, know how that was we that was just the people who came brought it in as they wanted yeah but anyways it was cold outside but we couldn't bring it inside because they were getting mad at us because we didn't buy their alcohol so we were all sitting outside with it snowing and i do not remember this at all that's what we had to do because okay, i remember they certain wouldn't. people like brought it in and had it under the table yeah because they were they told us that we couldn't have it we inside. had champagne inside they told us we could not bring the champagne was for the dinner part of it but as far as just the alcohol alone we couldn't bring our own in I didn't care. I don't drink alcohol. I'm not a big drinker at all. So I guess I wasn't paying attention to that. I did notice though that some people brought it in. It was like, whatever. I mean, whatever. we're, She's part, not hill this we're part hillbilly people. She's not it is what it is. Out. We have people in our family that are mm -hmm. what you would call a, but red, anyways, a redneck. You cut me it was off, a nice. Dude. It was a nice, simple wedding. It was simple. It was easy. It was, it was pretty. Yep. In and out. Ready to go. All right, moving on to the next question. Well, you can edit it and do whatever you want to. Or we can answer it again either way. It's fine. Okay, what's the next but one? Literally, you cut me off for talking about the age, and you told the people about the restaurants in town. I'm just saying. Exactly. See what I'm saying? Hypocrisy, babe. You, you, see, how, you see how goofy it sounds whenever you're talking about certain things that don't matter? Okay, moving on to the next question. All right, lots of questions. Get ready. What is in your kids' stockings? Okay, this is a little bit delayed, but that's okay. And what are their Christmas gifts this year? So I will put in the description box below or maybe in the comments and pin it our What We Got Our Kids for Christmas 2022 video in case anyone did not see that. Yeah. And then stockings. Okay, we quit doing stockings because my mom does them. And my mm -hmm. mom goes crazy with Christmas. So I thought, you know, in all reality, we have good kids. They are good, but they are like most kids where if they keep getting and getting and getting things, it's like they're not as appreciative. Plus, we just took them to Disney. That was like the main gift. So I really haven't done stockings in a while. Um, each Christmas, we, we do a lot of things similar, but then sometimes we do different things. And so I would like to do stockings again, but we just didn't this year. So they hung by the fireplace empty. So, but in the years past, let's give an example of what we'd put in there. Usually candy, um, some sort of little toy, like a little trinket toy mm -hmm. or something like that. Maybe coloring book and Co crowns. Yeah, coloring book and crowns, a deck of cards, candy like canes. Uno, candy, yeah, candy cane. Stuff like that. And stuff like that. Nothing really 
too fancy or anything, but. Kind of like just cheap sort of, you know, one to five dollar range items. Yeah, like the whole bag might cost like five bucks total, you know, or six bucks total yeah. of stuff. Well, nowadays it'd probably be well, 10, 15 dollars for yeah. whatever. You guys know what we mean, so. But we don't put fruit in the stockings. I don't know why that was a thing. I know growing up, we well, don't. Because back then fruit was just like I mean, we candy. Always, we always got like, uh, like apples and oranges and stuff like that. Well, that's good though. I mean, I think that's good. Our kids like that, but it's not as exciting when it's always in your pantry. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you know, we have oranges anyways. Well, man, we had oranges and stuff like that too, but we always got oranges in our stockings. Well, I, I guess they're trying to be healthier. What I loved in my stocking every year was those, we talked about this the other day, the lifesaver candies in like a book, like you open it up and it yeah. had like rolls of them. Yeah. That was my those favorite thing cool. ever. I like the, well, I mean, it's coming up, but the, um, the Starburst jelly beans that you get at oh, Easter. At Easter. Those are good. We're way going off topic, but that, that you're right. I can't those help you. So you started good. talking about candy and our, those things are really good. <laughs> and then the, the Reese eggs. And oh, I don't know why gosh. they taste better than the chocolate, the they Christmas do. tree ones or any of the other ones, but the eggs taste better. Okay. You better True. move on. We I better can... move on. We had some good Christmas goodies this year though. We did do the, okay. Off topic. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. All right. How is your husband's HVAC business going? It's going good. It's staying, we're staying busy. We're doing um, quite a bit of work. It's kind of um, trying to teach Landon and, uh, and Ty. And sometimes I have to learn that I have to get out of the way and let them try to fix something. Um, In case anyone's new, let's explain. So yeah. Landon is our oldest son. And this is kind of actually in another question, but he's our oldest son. He's 19. Mm -hmm. He started doing heating and cooling with Steve last year. We started, well, t technically the year before last year. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2021, in October, we officially opened up heating yeah. and cooling um, for our business. So Landon, our oldest son, and Steve started working. And then Landon's friend, which is now Whitney's boyfriend, his name is Ty, and he also is learning how to do heating and cooling and stuff. Yeah. Uh, right now, it's kind of word of mouth more, yep. um, you know, and you know, do something for somebody and then they'll tell their, you know, someone else or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, yep. you know, it's just, it's so other than that, I mean, we plan on doing a little bit more advertising this year. Yeah. We want it um, to grow so and, he doesn't have to. And do trying to get a little bigger. But other than that, I mean, as far as the ambition of it and to, to the business outlook of it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Hoping to grow because yep. he works a lot. He's our hero. He works two jobs. Anyways, he works two jobs and to be honest, it's exhausting. Mm -hmm. He doesn't get much sleep. He's still trying to be dad, husband, business owner, boss. I mean, just everything. Secretary. Mm -hmm. I mean, I help, but sometimes you have to do secretarial stuff. He just does it all. Plus his other job, which is a lot and it's extremely stressful. So we're praying and we appreciate your prayers. Those that do pray for us that the business would grow to where he can tell the other job. Goodbye. Hmm. All right. That's the prayer. Okay. And this was another question that kind of, I already said, it says, what is your son doing now that he's graduated? Okay. Um, she was wondering because her daughter also graduated in 2022. So we already answered that. Landon decided instead of doing college, he wants to learn the trade. So it started with my dad doing heating and cooling. My dad taught Steven. You gotta look up at the thing or, you know, act Sorry. like you're oh. talking to our friends. I got you. Okay. Anyways, my dad taught Stephen heating and cooling a long time ago. And Steve kind of quit the business for a while to do law enforcement, I guess is what we'll call it. And um, so anyway, so now Landon is going to be the third generation of heating and cooling. So it's like my dad taught Steve and now Stephen's teaching Landon. And so that's what he wants to do. He, he is into trades and just working instead of the college route right now. So. How have you grown and changed as parents from when your first few kiddos were little to now? Well, our values have changed. Um, I mean, we've always had like values and some bit of morals and stuff, but we've changed kind of the music we listen to a lot. I just, I guess our convictions have changed. I think we're more of a uh, tighter knit family now. We rely more on God to keep, I mean, we were just young in the beginning, so we didn't know what we were doing. Is there anything that you have to contribute to this? I mean, do you think you've changed from how you parent? Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, we all we all change on how we parent, especially the older we get and the more kids you have. You learn and yeah. 
you learn things from the the good things about doing certain ways and mm -hmm. then the other ways of doing things and and it's not necessarily yeah. that we're it's even like trial and error kind of thing i think i kind of got more lax actually the more kids that we've had and i've i've realized like i look at the oldest three which they're not perfect nobody is but like I, for one example like i used to have a rule where when they play with their guns landon whitney and kennedy you know fake guns nerf guns whatever but i didn't want them to be used to like pointing them at, at each other and they were more respectful and not as they didn't fight as much as our younger kids do and so I just started thinking the other day, I'm like, you know what? We're going to quit pointing guns at each other because either they're really going to hit each other with a dart <laughs> and then we're going to have this big fight or I don't know. It's just, it makes them kind of like want to fight more with each other and they're still little. I don't think they're quite ready for all that, you know, more adult type stuff. So there's certain things that I'm like, I need to kind of do the things, the rules like I did with the older kids because it turned out they were, I don't know, better behaved. Let's just be real. Yeah. I so I'm kind of honestly, to just be real frank, I'm trying to buckle down more and be a little bit more, not necessarily strict, but follow through more and just kind of go back to the way I used to. So I don't know. It's just different. We're changing in different ways mm -hmm. and realizing things. And it's just a lot. Um, okay. So what's a day in your homeschool life look like? look like. So basically, we're going to officially start back tomorrow on Monday the 2nd. Ideally, this is how it's supposed to be. Now, this isn't like every single day, but we wake up. I wake up before the kids. I do my mom morning routine, get breakfast going, and then I try to read to them our Bible story and character qualities while we do breakfast. It's nice because they're sitting there at the table and they're eating, and then um, it's something that I'm getting done and it kind of starts the day off on a good foot where they have, you know, something to do with God in their little minds mm -hmm. and a character quality, like be kind or be patient or whatever. And I can be like, Hey, do you remember the story we just read about whatever, when situations arise and it does help. That's what we start clean up after breakfast. Then I start with the youngest one that is actually doing school, which is Michael. I will sit with him and do the main things that's important for his level um, I'm not going to go into all the details, but I do all of Michael's main school stuff, like his reading and his math, essentially, and writing. Reading, writing, and math, okay? And then I'll do that with Benjamin and Bella, and then I will do that with Leland and kind of guide him. He's a little bit more self-guided now, so he kind of works out of a workbook, and I just kind of help make sure that he's doing it correctly and he understands. <laughs> Whitney and Kennedy they do their own thing. They're pretty much self-guided for the most part. So they'll work on their writing, reading, math, spelling, and stuff like that while I'm working with the little kids. Then we stop for lunch, do our lunch stuff, and I'll try to get like laundry, like a load of laundry or some kind of thing that I need to do. Now it's sometimes answering phone calls, calling him. I mean, there's just, it's, it's a different dynamic now that we have more things that we have to do. And then in the afternoon, when he goes to his second job is when I usually will sit down in this room and get out some books. And that's when we do um, history and science and things to that nature and cover the rest of the subjects, art, whatever. And if we're actually doing real art, then, you know, we'll obviously go back to the table. But we like to be kind of relaxed here. We do a type of schooling called Charlotte Mason. So if you don't know what that is, look it up. It's really cool. We love it. We've done it for a long time. Pretty much my whole homeschool motherhood career. We've done this type of learning. So mm. really, really interesting to him. Actually, you've done it too. We've just read to the kids and that's how we grow and stuff together. What curriculum do you use and what subjects do you all learn together? Well, I kind of sort of just covered that. The curriculum that we mostly use is called My Father's World. We've used it since Landa was in first grade. I love it. I love the heart of it. It's like guided. So you kind of have an idea of what you need to do, but yet it's also free. I just love it. So My Father's World, you basically just like read books to your kids. That's not the main thing, but that's the learning style. You learn through reading and looking at different things. So we'll read together about history and my father's world is really good with like tying things together so if we're learning about when they were building the pyramids that time period then you know they'll yeah. go over bible stories around that time like let's say moses and you know the egyptians and yada yada and they're really good at tying it all together so i use that a lot but there's times that we kind of go off course and don't always use a exact curriculum sometimes i just do our own thing yeah. so just depends 
Um, and also on a side note, sometimes I use something called gather round. It's where you basically print off these uh, units and they're different themes, North America, different continents, or even things like um, autom like trains, planes, and automobiles. Mm -hmm. And there's Bible and history and all those things in with that for that subject. So that's kind of fun. And we, we do that on occasion too. And again, the subjects we do together is history, Bible, science, geography, mainly those things together. Mm -hmm. Have you always lived in your current state and do you have dreams of ever moving somewhere else? So we have not always lived here. Like he said earlier, we lived in Tennessee. That's where he grew up. We enjoyed living in Tennessee. I like the area, I like the people. We live in uh, So we do not live in Tennessee now. No. We're not too far from it, but we do not live in Tennessee. No. We like the people here. Would we like to move off? We've talked about it a lot. Every day. We don't like the way that this state is ran. Yeah, but we haven't moved yet. <laughs> kind of hard no. to move like a new business. Uh, I mean, might be the best time to do it too, though. We have talked about like seriously, like the Kissimmee, Florida area. If there wasn't so many, yes, we have. Um, yes, we have. You have. I have not. You seriously? We said if we moved there, you would have business like crazy because there is insane amounts of people there. Well, business true. is going really well in Florida. So, anyways, but it's so crowded, and here it's more rural. I don't know. I mean, eventually you would get used to it, but we want some land. I mean, we have dreamed and talked about having land, and we do not have that right now. We have a decent yard, but it's it's not land. So, yes, we've talked about moving. We're not so set in stone where we wouldn't if the situation arose. Yes. So, we pray and ask God to guide us and put us where we need to be. Right now we're here, so we're going to bloom where we're at. Every day. <laughs> All right. How do you meal plan and how often do you grocery shop and budget? Used to be every two weeks I would go and get groceries. Mm -hmm. Every now and then we would do a month long haul. And this month I decided to do a one month haul. I'm tired of running to the store. I have a problem <laughs> with going to the grocery store for like one thing. And then, you know, normally it would cost like $5 with, you know, $30 worth of stuff. That's not the only reason, but it takes me away every single day from getting things done here. Oh. I'll leave, I'll come back. The kids have messed something up or we didn't, we didn't complete something that we wanted. So I did a month haul, a month grocery budget, whatever, for the month of January and we will see how that goes. Hopefully it goes well. We'll find out, I guess. Yeah, but anyways, either it's a two week thing or it's a, a one month thing usually. I did, lately it was a week at a time and that's just too uh -huh. much, too much. All right, how do you motivate yourself to do homeschool with your kids when you just don't feel like it? All right, I'm Oof. gonna be, I'm he doesn't That's really, the, yeah, I really don't not mean, his so field. It's really not me. All right. When I don't feel like it, I just do school differently. So if I'm feeling yucky for whatever reason, um, I will get on my bed and I'll just bring them in the room. We will um, YouTube school. So if we're learning about whatever, the Civil War, okay, I'll get on YouTube and look up a bunch of like, you know, Civil War kids version whatever. Sometimes they'll crawl up with their little box of their school stuff and they will sit and just do school with me and we'll sit on the bed. So, I mean, if I feel bad, then we'll just do it wherever. If I just am not in the mood or whatever, again, YouTube, we're living in a great time period as far as the technology. And so, I mean, you could look up on YouTube anything. We've looked up science experiments. I mean, there's been times where like I wanted to do a science experiment or I didn't have all the supplies or whatever. And literally you search it and you can find it. So, Instead of not doing school, we just do it differently. Or there's times where you need like a, a pick me up or whatever. And so we'll do something fun. Like we'll have a tea party to get in a good mood. We'll just talk about things. Maybe we'll go outside and just read outside. Just like do like a change of scenery. Or there's times we just give ourselves grace and we're like, okay, we're just, you know, so many kids are sick or, you know, if things are off, what I'm saying is sometimes we'll just give ourselves grace and say, okay, well, we'll just do extra school tomorrow and today we're just gonna you know rest and recover or whatever i want you to answer this because it's not just for me so this one says what things in your daily life bring you the most joy honestly getting up in the morning um making coffee and then making her coffee that i do every day um i don't know it's kind of just one of those things like it's like routine joyful or whatever uh coming home and like having lunch with the kids and stuff like that before I go to work. His uh, other work. Yeah, before I go to my other job. Mm -hmm. It, you know, it's like, I don't know, it's weird. It just, it's kind of, it's kind of joyful to sit down and talk to them for like, oh, okay, how was your guys' day? How did how'd this happen? how that happen? 
and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, when Ellie runs up to you yelling, Daddy, and hugs yeah. your leg. That's so yeah. sweet. So, I mean, that, those are those are joyful things. But other than that, I mean... The big kids make us laugh all the time. Yeah. Teenagers, they always have something goofy to tell us. Yeah, I mean, other than that, though, I mean, I can't really... It's not really, like, one thing that makes the life, like... A, like every day like joyful because everything's on how you make it anyways mm -hmm. so you can make it joyful or you can make it hatred um you can be mad and upset that you have to work however many hours it is that you have to work or you can just suck it up and put a smile on your face and just say yeah well i'm at least i'm making this money and maybe we can go on a vacation or you can go do something extra Friday night or something like that. So in everything you do, there's going to be some joy in it. Just mm -hmm. It's just what you pull out of it that's going to be joyful. Spending a little bit of time with her in the morning and then, you know, seeing the kids and stuff in the afternoon is kind of is, is, is joyful to me. It's fun. Mm -hmm. And then at night coming home, and like I said, usually I'll stay up. Um, Cattling and being together with your family, I think yeah, that's what I mean, you're that's, trying to say. It's like, joyful too, but like I said, I mean, you can make anything joyful. Yeah, but they just want to know what particular things daily brings you joy. Oh. So anyways, like he said, um, I enjoy waking up in the morning. Usually, most of the time, we have a smile on our face, tell each other good morning. It's just nice. Look over to the side and see your face. Um, and yes, he brings me coffee every morning, which is sweet. I look forward to that as well. When he's not here, I look forward to the times that I have with the kids one-on-one -on -one when we do school. I've missed that because we haven't done it in a while. Um, that brings me joy, like especially when they learn something new or they read words or whatever. So I really enjoy doing school with them. Doing laundry, I enjoy. I get to go in there and have some like alone time and I'll turn on like a podcast or Christian music jam out there and have like a mini praise and worship session. So there's just a lot of different things. It's not one particular thing, you know, just having a meal together and having our kids, our family all together. It's just simple things like that brings me joy. If I make a meal and I actually like it and it's not gross, that brings me joy. <laughs> I concoct a lot of things. She does do some concocting. <laughs> but anyways, I, don't, I mean, there's not one particular thing. At night, I will say, there's a little thing that I do. I turn on my diffuser, and I just, I don't know, I get my bed, like, adjusted the right way. This is when, like, you're not home yet. And I have, like, one hour to just either edit, like, a video or listen to. One of my guilty pleasures is watching conspiracy theory videos at night. True story, right? And so, conspiracy theory. So anyways, so I'll watch those sometimes or read the Bible. It just depends kind of what, what's going on. But it does bring me joy to have that, like, I've accomplished everything. I fed the people, and now I'm going to treat myself and just relax. So, yeah. all kinds of things. Do you have a, this is last question. This is from me to you. Do you have, I know you didn't expect this. Do uh -huh. you have any New Year's goal, resolution, thought, Go for yourself, like a personal goal for Stephen. <laughs> uh, uh oh, he's laughing. Just make it to twenty twenty four. That's all. That's all I'm trying to do. Okay. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to make it. That's all. No, well, I'm pretty sure you're gonna make it. Well, like I said, that's all I want to do. Okay, that's <laughs> it. That's like your only goal, just to stay alive. I mean, that's the only goal I really got is to stay alive. I mean, as far as, I don't, I don't have any goals mm -hmm. on the, I don't, I don't like doing the new year's resolution thing yeah. or trying to make these like, uh, oh, I'm going to come, it's the new year. I'm going to do a We're new diet or pounds. I'm going to do a new workout yeah. or I'm going to do all this other stuff. I mean, it's good to have a goal. I don't do all that stuff because I'm frankly, I'm not very good with like plans like that. I think um, you're good with things that actually matter to you. Like there's goals for, okay, for instance, Bella has a bed that she's been waiting on for a couple of years to be made. Uh -huh. I'm sure you'll accomplish that goal of like giving her her little cottage bed. So it's like little like practical things I could see you accomplishing. Well, I mean, that's not really goals. I mean, that's just things that I need well, to get done. Well, it's making your daughter's dream come true. It's on a D, it's on a, it's on the to-do list that has been put out for me. Yeah. But, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I want to get done. At the same time, the stuff that I want to get done, if I do get it done in a, in a year, I get it done. If I don't get it done, I, I really don't care. Yeah. It'll get done when it gets done. He does. He's really good at accomplishing 
things. I am working on that. Um, my, I don't have any like major goals that are unattainable because I've learned that you can set yourself up and feel like a failure, but I am 70% of the way through reading the Bible. So I do want to finish that. And then I want to get a study Bible and actually start studying it more. I read through it, but there's so many things I don't know. So that is something I want oh. to do. And then my main thing is, and he kind of already knows this, like we ran constantly last year. Yeah. And it was so busy and part of it was nice, but I want to become less busy and focus more on our home, fixing the things that need to be fixed that I can do, working more on my children's hearts we, because he's gone so much. It's affected our kids as far as, I don't know, everyone just misses him. So it affects the mood and it affects me. And so it's like this domino effect. And so we've had to really work on attitudes and hearts and kids getting along and just all kinds of things. So I wanted to focus more on my children and our home, basically put my heart back in our home. Yeah. Making meals. Like I quit making all the homemade meals that I did because we're running constantly. And yeah. I used to bake all kinds of things and just Susie homemaker it and I quit. Uh -huh. So that's my goals and that's more realistic. Just more a focus towards husband, home and that's, children. That's, that's, God. That goes back to why I don't make goals because well, I have there's to. so much, there's so much stuff that goes in between, between tomorrow, what I have planned that I want to do and what I want to get done. And all it would take is one phone call and all that, what I wanted to get done tomorrow would be completely out the window. I'm talking about like a long-term goal. Like let's say, I don't know, you want to pray more often. I mean, things that are realistic, like it's realistic for me to stay in our home more. Okay. I mean, I heart, what, you know I what I'm saying? saying? Like it's more okay. of a heart thing, not like this task must be done by January the whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I got you. I'll Understand. be bringing you guys along for our journey. We are working on our Jack and Jill bathroom still. We kind of quit that for like a while because we went on vacation mm -hmm. and stuff. So it's... Then we came back. And it's it was, only like 50% done. <laughs> yeah, it's about 50% or so. Yeah. I mean, there's just... There's some things there's we got to get, there. get done. But. And then we've got, again, Bella's bed. We're working mm -hmm. on it. We've got to fix... We just, the reality is we're not perfect and our kids aren't perfect. So they've knocked some holes in the walls, mm -hmm. you know, not like on purpose, but like they'll jump on the chair and it fell oh, into yeah. the wall and it, you know, yeah. so we have holes and things to patch around here. I have carpet to shampoo. I mean, there's just boring things like that, like goals, but I'm not going to share all that. So anyways, we hope you have a wonderful 2023. Thank you for praying for us and being there for us and supporting us. I have all kinds of sweet friends that comment things that you don't know anything about, but I do. And I, I tell you sometimes, so. Sometimes. Yeah. So anyways, I hope to be putting out more videos, God willing. You don't mind doing questions and answers. Nope. I don't mind at all, sweetheart. You're sweet. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyways, thank you so much, guys, for watching us. We appreciate it. Thanks for listening to us. And we will see, see you, you on, on the, the next, next one. one.